Welcome to Lesson 8G, More Pipe Flow Examples. In this lesson we do two more pipe flow examples. In the first one we'll calculate turbine shaft power, and in the second one we'll calculate volume flow rate, which as we'll see will require some iteration. For a quick review, these are the main equations that we need for all these kinds of problems. The Churchill equation, the energy equation in head form, and this equation for summing the major and minor losses. In our first example we calculate turbine shaft power. We have flow from one tank to a lower tank with the turbine that generates power through this shaft. There's one elbow and one angle valve. This is both an elbow and a valve together. We give the fluid properties, the elevation difference, pipe diameter, and knowing the kind of pipe we can look up the roughness. We have total pipe length, the turbine efficiency, and the volume flow rate. We want to calculate the shaft power produced by this turbine in kilowatts. First step in all these problems is to draw a control volume. I picked a wise control volume that cuts through the surface of the water in both tanks and cuts through the shaft of the turbine and encompasses all our other pipe flow components. Next we apply the head form of the energy equation from inlet to outlet. Since both P1 and P2 are atmospheric pressure by wise choice of control volume, these two terms cancel. Also V1 and V2 are nearly zero since these are large tanks at the inlet and outlet. There's no pump in this problem, but there is a turbine, and there is elevation difference. And there are, of course, head losses, both major and minor. From a previous lesson, we have this definition of turbine efficiency. H turbine extracted is W dot of the turbine shaft, the shaft power, divided by the turbine efficiency, M dot G. Since we're given a volume flow rate, M dot is rho V dot. Since pipe diameter is constant throughout, we use this simplified version of the HL total equation. So solving for H turbine E and then for W turbine shaft, we get this equation, which is our answer in variable form. And we know most of these parameters, except we have to do a little bit of work to find V, F, and sigma KL. Let's do that. We know that average speed is V dot over A, equal four V dot over pi D squared. I plug in the numbers and get V. I'm keeping lots of digits here because we need these values in further calculations, so I want to avoid round off error. The Reynolds number is rho VD over mu, and when I plug in the numbers, I get this value for Reynolds number, which is turbulent. We look up the average roughness for this type of pipe, we get 0.26 millimeters, and then we can calculate epsilon over D, the non-dimensional roughness coefficient. The Churchill equation at this Reynolds number and this non-dimensional roughness gives F equals 0 0.01318. Now we calculate the sum of all the minor loss coefficients. We look these up again in the tables. This is our inlet, our angle valve, our elbow, and alpha at the outlet. I'll let this be 1.05 since we have turbulent flow. Again, as a review from last lesson, when you have your outlet enclosed by the control volume, this turbulent jet is included as a minor loss. So we add up all the minor loss coefficients and we get 6.47. Now we have everything we need to plug into our equation and solve. W dot shaft is turbine efficiency, density, volume flow rate, G, and continuing on the next line, we have the quantity H gross, V squared over 2G, F, L over D, plus sigma KL and two unity conversion factors. This is the F from the Churchill equation, which I realize I wrote wrong previously, so I corrected that. When I plug everything in to my calculator, I get 4.03 kilowatts, which I also verified using software. For the next example problem, we have an unknown volume flow rate. Here we have water draining from a tank with a valve and two elbows, a submerged outlet, and a sharp inlet. But unlike all the previous problems, we don't know the volume flow rate. That's what we want to find. We're given the height difference, the pipe diameter, roughness, pipe length, and the kind of elbows and valve we have. Again, the first step is to draw a control volume, which I already did in the usual fashion. And we apply the head form of the energy equation. This is very similar to the previous problem, except we have no turbine. And these terms drop out for the same reasons as before. So our energy equation reduces to something much simpler but this turns out to be a much more difficult problem to solve. Since we have one pipe diameter throughout, 
this equation is again valid, and we have equations for Reynolds number, volume flow rate, and we calculate our epsilon over d. We need one more equation, which is the Churchill equation, so that this problem is mathematically sound with the same number of equations as unknowns. Again, we sum all the minor losses. Looking these up in the tables, we have a sharp inlet, two 90-degree elbows, a globe valve, and alpha at the exit of the pipe. We get 13.35. Now we want to apply the Churchill equation, which gives us f as a function of Reynolds number and epsilon over d. The problem is the Reynolds number is not known. So what can we do? Well, we're going to have to iterate. There are several ways to do this. From experience, I've found that this way usually converges the fastest. What I'll do is solve for v from this equation, and knowing that HL total is just capital H. So we get v is square root of 2gh over FL over D plus sigma KL. Now we set up the iteration scheme. I'm going to guess F, the Darcy friction factor. Then I can calculate V from this equation. The numbers I give will be in units of meters per second. Once I have V, I can calculate the Reynolds number. And then from Churchill, I can get a new F. I'll guess something reasonable, 0.04. Plug that into this equation where we know everything else. I get 3.8907 meters per second which yields this Reynolds number, and then the Churchill equation gives me f. I'm going to use this f as my next guess, and I repeat the calculations, v, Reynolds number, and a new f, which I use for my next round of iteration. You can see that we're converging. In just three iterations, we're already good to more than four digits. We could stop there, since we're not more accurate than that anyway, but I'll keep going where I'm adding more digits, and even to six digits, we have converged. As you can see, this technique yields very rapid convergence. This last row is our final results for F, V, Reynolds number, and the converged F again. So all that's left is to calculate V dot. Using our converged speed, V, and pi d squared over 4, we get our volume flow rate, which I round to three digits as 0.00211 meter cube per second. I verified all these numbers using software. This iteration scheme is quite easy to put into Excel because once you generate this first row, you can fill down for as many rows as needed. You can also use other software like MATLAB or Ease to solve a set of simultaneous equations. If you do it right, you should get the same answer. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.